Hello and welcome to Battlefront 2. So, you probably noticed, hey, this is different than, you know, normal. This, this should be Warhammer right now, you know. It's Thursday. Yeah, it should, but the servers are currently dead. And not like no one's playing dead, but like they did a server migration and it's broken. The community manager's like, oh, well, it'll take, you know, two to three days, okay. You know, they started Saturday night. I'm like, okay, Sunday, my recording day. I'm like, okay, you know, I'll give it some time. Sunday comes and goes. I'm like, okay, Monday. Monday comes and goes. Servers are still down. I'm like, okay, uh, maybe Tuesday. Tuesday rolls around. Still nothing. I'm like, okay. Wednesday? Wednesday, they're like, hey, the servers are up. I was like, oh, cool. The servers are up. That's a good sign. So, fire up the game. And it instantly goes, oh, hey, sorry. It doesn't work. I was like, wait, what? The game keeps saying, oh, we can't connect to GameSpark servers. You know, that's pretty annoying. So, I can keep going, you know, doing my usual thing. I'm like, okay, well, we'll try to, you know, we'll quit the game and go back in. Sometimes you, you just gotta kind of give it a little bonk and things work. So, quit the game, go back in. The game connects. I'm like, okay, cool. So, I do that. Get to the main menu. There's no characters. I'm like, okay, a little weird. Hit play, thinking, well, it has to have somebody save. Nothing happens. I'm like, okay, fine. Quit the game, go back in. So I quit the game, go back in, connects to their now the AWS servers. I'm like, okay, good sign. Get to the menu. All my characters are there. I'm like, okay, cool. Switch to my character for the show, for like the episodes I'm doing. So my psyker, go in, and suddenly doesn't work. You know, I'm sitting here and there's no uh, like I hit the play button, nothing happens. It's like, okay, this is getting a little tedious here. You know what's going on. Quit back out, do it again. Can hit play. Is this guy got no face? He has no face. Ah, this game is like five years old and there's still weird bugs. But, like I said, kept going back in, hit and play, doesn't work, quit the game, go back in, hit play, doesn't work. At this point, it has been seven hours since they're like, oh yeah, the servers are online. And they're like, well, we don't know what's wrong. I'm like, you don't know what's wrong? Which kind of irks me because they had the whole... They already did this for Xbox. They already did the server migration from GameSpark to AWS. You can't tell me the server architecture is that different that they can't figure out what's going on. So uh, I'm, I'm annoyed. Genuinely, I am annoyed because this, this shouldn't be that difficult of an issue. But I was sitting there trying to think what to play, and I was like, you know what? Since we're we're a channel that does sci-fi, and I do talk about Star Wars a decent amount at times. Let's just play Battlefront. I haven't played Battlefront in a while. I love this game. It's got its flaws, definitely. But, you know, I always hope for a sequel. Admittedly, 2042 did not give me a lot of faith in DICE. Which is a shame because, you know, this... Realistically, this game is a solid jumping off point.
You know, introduce like enforcer level Jedi and Sith or the Knights of Ren or something like that. Introduce more maps, more definitely more weapons. Add some skins for weapons, you know, oh get a thousand kills. And you get, you know, the like a chrome version of a blaster. That's fine. It's within lore. I mean, Captain Phasma's armor is said to be the plating from... I want to say it was Padme's ship. The Naboo Star Cruiser. So it's not like it's completely out of left field. Not like they're sitting there being like, you need to have pink armor or something that's just strange. Oh yeah. And man, it, this week... <laughs> it's not even a week, it's been like... Two weeks at this point? Of just everything going weird, man. The stuff with Twitch? God, that was funny. Like, Twitch... <laughs> I can't even, like, process what happened without chuckling a little bit. Simply because it is the goofiest thing. Like, oh, hey, so we're... Like, first off, they get rid of the 70-30 revenue split. First off, bad move. YouTube has a 70-30 rev split for everybody that I know of. I don't benefit from it. I'm too small. But, you know, it's there. And it's cool. But what we have with Twitch is they're like, oh no, we can't do that. You know, you gotta make us money. And it just, oh man, stuff like that. Or they had kneecapped September. Because people usually do like subathons since it's, you know, the cheapest time to do it. And they're. The subs are discounted, and it's a good deal for people. But then they're, Twitch is like, no, we don't want you to do that. It's like, why? That, that's money for you. <laughs> and then there was all the drama with some streamers doing no-no things and covering for each other, which, I mean... I... I am not surprised. That's... You know, part and parcel of any industry, people look out for each other. Sometimes people cover for really scummy people. That's just reality. And it's, it amuses me to be like, oh, I can't believe, you know, these streamers, these people who are typically absolute friggin' dweebs, are doing bad things once they get a modicum of clout. And I'm like, yeah, it's amazing. People... <laughs> There's a reason the saying, absolute power corrupts absolutely. You know, how many times are we going to see someone who isn't normally popular get popular and then leverage that and do bad things? Or people who are just bad people. But yeah, I, it's stupid. People doing dumb things. And I still have to watch Andor. I've been hearing that it's a really good show. Which is good because I'm honestly real tired of how a lot of the stuff has been going for Star Wars. Like, Book of Boba Fett. I love Boba Fett. I am a hardcore fan of the Mandalorians. And that show, especially because of how they did Boba Fett, just really put Disney on my shit list. Like, come on, you can't do my favorite character like that. And I think I mentioned it before, but the stunt, one of the stunt coordinators for Mandalorian just flat out was like, yeah, uh, Disney did really bad damage to the brand. And there was recently an article 
like a Hollywood, like, I want to say a Hollywood insider, but that sounds really stupid, but that's kind of what the guy is, like, someone in the industry. I was like, yeah, Disney did a lot of really bad and irreparable damage with how they've handled the movie side of things, and to a degree the shows. It's like, yeah, yeah. Isn't it amazing how, you know, the fans have been saying that for years. But, you know, people would call them the fandom menace, and they're all terrible people. I'm like, nah, it's just people who care. It's amazing that, you know, people who care are going to have opinions. I do wish this game would have brought back just, like, ammo. That was one thing I always liked about the OG Battlefronts, was... Just having to deal with ammo and being an engineer, dealing out ammo and health. Even when I would just play with, like, a friend... Uh, one of my best friends, we still play this when we hang out. We'll play OG Battlefront 2, and... He'll, be, he'll grab whatever class, he's like, oh, what are you gonna pick? And I just... Why always pick engineer? And he's just like, oh, that's a good choice. I'm like, dude, I always pick this. I support classes are just part of my DNA. And especially because in Battlefront, like the remake of Battlefront One, they had a deployable uh, back to droid, which I mean, it was a specifically, I think, it was an Imperial. One of their med droids, because it wasn't their torture droid, because that's a floating one. But it was like their medical droid. And I was like, you had this! You were on the right path! All you had to do was continue with that. That's what I'd love to see. I'd love to see these games become a bit more open in their maps. And start introducing more of... More of just an interesting design to them, you know, let players kind of set up positions where they want to set up positions. It doesn't have to go full on, like, Section 8, where you can call in supply points and turrets and all this stuff, and you have the dynamic combat missions. Even though I do love the DCMs, I think they're an amazing design and made the game really fun. No, you don't. You get off this point, hooligans. and the battle station is secure. They'll think twice before attempting such a reckless attack again. Hmm. Yeah, I have all camo for my clones. Gotta look baller. Thought oh, we're going officer. I love playing officer. Ah, uh, 30 seconds to wait. Yeah, I turned off the music because... If there is going to be a company that is going to, you know, crawl out from under my desk and beat me senseless, it's going to be Disney. You used, you know, three quarters of a second of our copyrighted music. You can't do that. And it's like, but it's in the game. I get when it's, you know, licensed music. You know, it's, oh, we have... You know, Saints Row 3, and you can listen to Power by Kanye West. Okay, I get it. You know, you licensed it for the game. I still think it's stupid. I think you should have the right to have the music play. But I get it. Hit him with the blicky! And I died. The blicky did not save me. I wish we would actually get something for... Officers need to have more than a pistol. I think a pistol should be default on every class as an option. Because why wouldn't you have a sidearm? But then officers need a submachine gun. Or something. I... Subguns exist in battle, in Star Wars. You know? And honestly, I just really like... 
I, I, I think they should go more into a battlefield design than anything because I think they can... You can do a lot with it. Like, oh, hey, you have the ability, you know, to have a shotgun. Well, cool, that's going to work for certain situations. It won't work for others. You know, wide open area, shotguns are worthless. But in an area like this, yeah, I'm probably going to be using something to sweep. Come on, let me do it, please. I screwed that jump up entirely. Okay, at this point I'm just stupid. Come on. Run, jump. Or I'm just fat. Okay, cool. Please. I just want to put it on a box. That is a terrible turret position. I'm picking you back up. You go elsewhere. Hmm. Who do we want to use? Nah, we'll go Wookiee Warrior. But that's something, too, they could add. Like, the Wookiees... I think should be limited to certain maps. Because a lot of the time, they should just be showing up as... Kind of like how in the old uh, battlefronts, you would have them as environment or like uh, allied factions. Hmm. A little rusty with Wookies. There's a lot of things this game could improve, and I think it would be better off for it. It's something... I, I hate kind of being that guy, but I think they need more diehard Star Wars fans. Because a lot of the times when you see like the E3 presentations for these games, and anything Star Wars, people are like, yeah, I'm a big fan. I know Darp Bader. And you're like, what? what? Did, did you just say Darp Bader? And it's like, yeah. You know, the guy with the light sword? And it's like, this is gross. You know, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Been one since I was a kid. And, you know, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh my god, it's the wrong color lightsaber for Luke. But it's like... There are things that I feel aren't that good in terms of continuity or design that don't really fit with the pre-established stuff. Like, a big thing for me that always bugged me when it came to the last trilogy was, wow, I just got 10 kills, that's kind of cool. 11. 12. Come on, are we going to go higher? 13? 14. Oh my god. 15, 16, the whole, like the AI all clumped up, I guess. But, uh, like one thing that bugged me was they're like, oh, you know, the First Order, they're big fans of the Empire. It's like, okay, I get that. They're such big fans, they created another pseudo Death Star. I'm like, wait. Again? You know the last one exploded, and the one before that also exploded. Maybe you should not be trying these. And I do get it. From like the from the original Star Wars stuff in the expanded universe, they were more or less made by the Emperor to counter the Yuuzhan Vong. They were going to show up, he knew about it, why he didn't tell anyone, you know, that's the power of the expanded universe. Continuity is a little wishy-washy. But it made more sense than just like, yeah, I just want to make a giant death satellite. 
or Death Space Station, it'll be cool. You know, it, we're gonna spend potentially trillions on this thing. But... It, it just seems like such a weird thing to be like, yeah, we're gonna do that again. Instead of... Just literally anything else. Like, the fact that they didn't try cloning at all. It was like, yeah, we're just gonna recruit kids from other plants. It's like, dude, I, I get it. Cloning became a lot more difficult to do. But you probably should have, like, done it. Because it's a lot easier to just mass-produce troops than not. I mean, you get the whole difference between clones from Kamino and Sparty clones and I think Bakura, that planet, they clone everybody or at least a large portion of their population is clones. So it's not like it's completely impossible to find clones anymore. Yeah, I would have just preferred to get... Like, I get it. You Disney is not going to do the Yuzen Vong invasion. That was... If we're going to be real, that's a pretty adult situation. You know, implanting Yorick coral in people's skin and in their body to both torture and enslave them. The ritualistic scarring of the Yuzen Vong. Stuff like that goes hard. It's cool, but it's a little hard to sell an action figure for that. Can't imagine trying to seeing some eight year old in, you know, Target being like, I want this scarring a uh, action set. Okay, Timmy, we'll get you the figure set where, you know, you get all these guys who are all messed up, it's like, ah, eh, you can't really get away with that. And realistically, that's how a lot of things are. Uh, look at... I'm trying to think. A great example is stuff like G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe in the 80s effectively existed to sell action figures. You know, that's how... A lot of stuff is kind of going back to that same old design of, hey, can this sell toys? Which is understandable, you know. For stuff, for instance, like animation, animation is not cheap. The 3D animation is markedly cheaper because you just have a static, somewhat static mesh, and you just move it around, pose it, you do whatever animations and you can... If you have like a walking animation once, you can use that a million times for a million episodes. But the only one that was really successful is like Jimmy Neutron. So it's been a while. Yeah, screwed no matter how I... Played that one. What do we have as an option? Yeah, grenades. That always works. Go, yogurt. Yeah, I thought that was going to be a loss. And the tankers now control the area. We've lost this battle, but we haven't lost the war. But that is all for now. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit the like button. Helps out the channel a lot. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.